द लीगल प्रोफेशन प्लेज ए की रोल इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द मॉडर्न सोसाइटीज इन फैक्ट ए स्ट्रॉन्ग लीगल सिस्टम इज ए फाउंडेशन फॉर ए साउंड लीगल ऑर्डर द बिग्स लीगल फॉर्म हैज फंक्शन एज एन आउट स्टैंडिंग प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर ब्रिंगिंग टूगेदर द लीगल कम्युनिटीज फ्रॉम दीज नेशंस एंड हैज बिकम ए क्रेडिबल वॉइस एंड ए फोर्स टू बी रेकन फॉर ए लीगल एक्सीलेंस एट ए ग्लोबल लेवल ऑन द बैक ऑफ द टू एक्सट्रीमली सक्सेसफुल मीट्स ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द ब्रिक्स लीगल फॉर्म इन ब्राजीलिया टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन एंड संगाई इन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन द थर्ड बिग लीगल फॉर्म टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन इन दैली हैज बीन एबल टू जनरेट ट्रेमेंडस सिनर्जी अमंग द मेंबर ऑफ द नेशन दीज इनिशिएटिव सेल गो ए लॉन्ग वे इन प्रमोटिंग कम्युनिकेशन एंड कॉपरेशन अमंग द गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशियस लीगल प्रोफेशनल्स एंड एंटरप्रेन्योर्स एंड इन प्रोवाइडिंग लीगल सपोर्ट फॉर पॉलिटिकल इकोनॉमिक कल्चरल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ब्रिक्स मेंबर्स कंट्रीज under the stewardship of the honorable prime minister shri narendra modi the world is witnessing a transformational exercise being undertaken in india to create a conducive climate for investors intending to make investment in the country the government is committed to paving the way for india to be a credible investment destination with robust and simplified economic and legal structure in place Since July 2014 the government has repealed a total of 1159 obsolete laws from its books thereby removing a large number of legal bottlenecks which were creating confusion among the investors intending to do business in India the government has undertaken several initiatives during the last 2 years through enactment of several laws which are pivotal in achieving the objective of legal reforms and investment investment promotion the goods and service tax acts commonly known as gstc brought in by government in india government of india in 2016 is the single largest in indirect tax reforms since independence we shall pave the way for single nation single tax regime in the country a series of recent comprehensive changes made in the intrinsic laws have made it extremely easy for business to employ young and dynamic men and women into their organization the commercial courts acts enacted in 2015 create a separate division for commercial cases in courts for speedy and effective justice the insolvency and bankruptcy court also enacted in this year 2016 is a landmark legislation brought in by the government which makes winding up business in the country easier and speedier for the business community and it is also one of the facet of the ease of doing business in harmony with the bankruptcy code amendments have also been brought in 2016 in surface and drt acts make it compatible with the insolvency and bankruptcy code and to suit the changing credit landscape and to augment ease of doing business in the country steps such as allowing self attestation of the document self computation of assessment of tax returns have not only helped in accelerating economic growth but have also improved the international image of the indian justice delivery system such measures shall go a long way in further instilling the faith of investors in legal culture of the india the brazilian declaration made by this form in 2014 stated in its mission statement that court assisting in developing a conducive legal and policy framework for creating greater trade investment and employment opportunity among brics nations and court through the measures undertaken by the government of india during the last 2 years it is evident that the government of india is committed 
to walking the path as enunciated in the Brasilia Declaration. It is a matter of pride for India to be the host of the BRICS summit this year. The theme of this year's BRICS summit is extremely pertinent one, developing legal frameworks for building responsive, collective, and inclusive solutions. Acting upon this theme, the government of India has taken a credible steps for expediting the delivery of justice. With the kind of challenges faced by India in terms of sheer quantum and spectrum of cases, it becomes a crucial that India is a responsive to such challenges. The government's Digital India program is aimed at transforming the entire ecosystem of public services and that delivery through the use of information technology for digital empowerment of the society. The e-court mission mode projects include computerization of all courts, installation of the video conferencing facilities, digitization of all documents, and enhanced availability of the e-services to lawyers and litigants through e-filing, e-payment, gateways, and mobile applications. One of the major outcome of the project has been setting up of the national judicial data grid which will enable the judiciary to monitor the performance of the judges, make assessment of the case load in courts, and take decision for improved allocation of cases. While e-court system aims to ease the existing challenges facing the justice delivery system, massive business processes re-engineering has been done to simplify the existing process in the light of ICT developments. The government of India is closely monitoring the public grievances redressal system for redressing the grievances of the lakhs of citizens in the country against the government department, public sector units, including the banking sector and companies. This public grievances redressal system has worked well and it is being monitored not by the government but also by the public, this standing committee of the parliament. I am extremely elated to know that the third British legal forum has led to the establishment of the International Dispute Resolution Center for BRICS and Emerging Economics in New Delhi, just like its first center in Shanghai. The New Delhi forms aim to provide comprehensive network for legal professionals of the BRICS countries to cooperate effectively and efficiently in dispute settlement. Also, the proposal to establish a professional committee for BRICS dispute resolution shall further deepen the cooperation of experts of BRICS nations. Moreover, steps such as the creation of the BRICS Experts Committee on Financial Laws and establishment of the BRICS law, New Development Bank shall also help in strengthening the financial cooperation among BRICS nations. Father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi said, India lives in its villages. Hence, in a country where half of its population lives in the rural area, it becomes an imperative that viable and effective solutions are in place for imparting justice to the citizen, rural citizens. Community mediation is one of such methods which can be put in place for providing justice to far-flung areas in BRICS nations, with over two-fifths of the world population living in the BRICS nation, this approach can go a long way in curing the endemic impediment of delay and cost in imparting justice to the citizen at the bottom of the pyramid. Community mediation is done in India through low adalas, set up under the Legal Services Authorities Act, to give an illustration of the impact and effectiveness of these low adalas. In the year 2014 alone, 2.5 crore cases were solved in over 1.8 lakh local adults held across the country. 
The Legal Services Authorities Act not only deals with low adalat, but it also provides legal awareness camps and legal aid. Existence of a vibrant alternative dispute resolution system in the country is a prerequisite for maintaining sustained flow of foreign investment in the country. The Arbitration and Conciliation Act has been amended recently in the year 2015 to streamline the arbitration process and to ensure that the arbitration proceedings are completed within a time-bound period. These amendments contain provisions not just for enforcement of the domestic awards, but also that of the foreign awards. I am happy to say that the necessary steps have already been initiated with the proposed establishment of the Mumbai Center for International Arbitration, which is a joint initiative between the government of Maharashtra and the business and legal communities. As the government is committed for creating an effective justice delivery system, the, nation, the national litigation policy is under consideration of the government of India. With a two-pronged approach, focusing on both pre- and post-litigation reforms, this policy is aimed at eliminating unwarranted litigation and creating a mechanism to ensure sound legal back backing for formulation of governmental orders and legislation. Government of India understands the significance attached to pre-litigation mediation and has existence deliberations are being, extensive deliberations are being made to institutionalize this framework to reduce the burden on judicial system in the country. No doubt, this concept of pre-litigation mediation is not available in our country, but it's available in most of the developed countries of the world, where litigation is being reduced to a large extent, and some of the countries, they have reduced the litigation about 60%, and all these things are being settled outside the court. The policy shall ensure that the strong checks and balances are put in place to prevent frivolous cases and for reduction of the burden of the courts in the country by steps such as strict scrutiny of the judgment of the cases filed by the government and granting relief to all aggrieved parties on the basis of pre-decided cases irrespective of the fact that whether they have approached the court or not. I would like to inform the esteemed audience present here that the government is also mulling over the creation of the separate All India Judicial Services, setting up a national litigation monitoring cell, and expanding the scope of Legal Services Authorities Act to introduce more matter under the purview of the Lok Adalat. I would now like, I would now like to speak about few challenges and opportunities in legal education system across the globe. I shall begin by speaking on the subject of legal education. Basically, legal education is edifice on which the legal profession is built. It is the excellence in the quality of education which saves the rule of law. Assimilating a global perspective into legal studies expands the horizon of new students, law students, for gaining profound legal knowledge. Efforts are required to be made to purport, promote excellence in human resource through exchange of legal knowledge. With a quadridimensional global approach, encompassing components such as curriculum, faculty, program and interaction, measures such as regular and frequent exchanges, study tour, government to government interaction of the legal officials, optimal productivity can be achieved in imparting legal education, thereby leading to a more enhanced performance of justice delivery system across the BRICS nation. We have seen as on today that our curriculum of the universities, it may be of law schools of eminence. We only provide the domestic law. We are not concerned about the global curriculum. So this is a time that we have to think about it and ponder over it. Second important aspect I would like to touch upon is that the undertaking high quality legal research. 
Concrete training for practicing advocates help in enhancing the quality of legal professionals in the system, which in terms help in reduction of pendency of the cases and delay in imparting justice. The Government of India is committed in bringing reforms in the field of legal research, education and training, and is contemplating to implement recommendation given by the Parliamentary Standing Committee report on promotion of legal education and research, notably the inclusion of Jewish Dr. JD program and broadening the scope of the legal curriculum to stay in tune with the latest development in legal field. I am happy to inform the August audience of the Bar Council of India has initiated setting up one lawyer academy in every state in the country to equip the lawyer with the development in the field of the law in globalized economy as has been the case with judicial